Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. I'm Ms. Zahira. In this video, we're going to talk about how to conduct a hypothesis testing using confidence interval approach. Yes, this is another method or another option that you can choose from to conduct a statistical hypothesis testing. In actual fact, there are three different approaches that you can use to conduct a statistical hypothesis testing. The first one is the traditional approach, which you have learned in our previous videos. The second one is the confidence interval approach, which you will learn in this video. And finally, the p-value approach, which you will learn in my next video. So before we go on into the confidence interval approach, why don't we recap on what you have learned in the previous videos. So in traditional approach, there are five steps altogether, right? The first one was to con construct your hypothesis statement. This is where you need to get your H0 and also your H1. The second step is to find your test statistics value. So you're going to have to go on and find formula in your formula book. Uh, which one which is appropriate to your claim and then the third one is to find or to establish the critical value and then you have to decide whether is this a right tail test is it a two tail test or is it a left tail test remember and the fourth step is to make a decision whether to reject hnl or to do not reject hnl and finally the conclusion you need to make a statement about your claim so these are the five steps of of doing hypothesis testing using the traditional approach. So in confidence interval approach, you will have similar steps, but a little bit different. In confidence interval approach, there are only four steps that you need to do. The first one is very much similar to the one in the traditional approach, which is you need to construct your hypothesis statement. Uh, from your claim, you need to come up with H0 and also H and also H1, and it's exactly the same step as in the traditional approach. Okay, so the second step is to find the confidence interval which is appropriate or which is relevant to your claim. So this confidence interval in step two here is the exact same confidence interval that you learned in chapter two. So um, this is where you get to apply what you learned in chapter two in hypothesis testing. Okay, and the third step here it's different from the traditional approach. You no longer need to establish any critical value. The third step in confidence interval approach, you can straight away make your decision. It's the same decision that you had to do in the traditional approach. It is whether to reject HNL or to do not reject HNL. But the rules here will be a bit different from the traditional approach and we will go to that later. Right, And finally, after making your decision, you need to make a conclusion about your claim. Whether you have enough evidence to support your claim or is it you have enough evidence to reject your claim and whatnot. Okay, so these are the four steps in, do, in uh, hypothesis testing using confidence interval approach. I have one good news for you because in confidence interval approach, it is only applicable for a two-tail test hypothesis testing. So you no longer need to worry about whether is this a one-tail test, is it a two-tail test. You can only conduct a hypothesis testing using confidence interval approach if your claim, if your hypothesis involves a two-tail test. All right? Okay, so that's pretty clear. All right, so let's discuss about step Okay, so let's talk about how to make decision using confidence interval approach. Right, so I'm going to make a comparison between the traditional approach decision making and the confidence interval approach decision making so that you can have a better understanding about the differences between the two methods. Okay, so previously in the uh, traditional approach, how do you make decision whether or not to reject or to do not reject cash now? Well, it's based on your test statistic values, right? You will, if your test statistic value falls in the rejection region, you will reject H now. So that is in traditional approach. But what about in the confidence interval approach? Well, in confidence interval approach, it depends on your hypothesized parameter. 
Yes, it depends on your hypothesized parameter. If your hypothesized parameter is not included, it is not in the confidence interval which you obtain in step 2, so your decision will be to reject H now. Okay, so this is a little bit different from the traditional approach. In the traditional approach, you will be looking at the test statistic value, but in the confidence interval approach, you'll be looking at the uh, hypothesized parameter value. Right, so, th so that is how to decide uh, to reject H now. So uh, conversely, if you wanna, if your test statistic value falls in the acceptance region, you would need to do not reject H now in the traditional approach. While in the confidence interval approach, if your hypothesized parameter is in the confidence interval obtained in step two, then your decision is to do not reject H now. Okay, so I think that is pretty clear. Um, you need to remember these rules for confidence interval approach. And conclusion is the exact same conclusion which you also did for traditional approach. Okay, so why don't we jump to our first example for this video. I'm going to recycle the same example we used in chapter 3.2. So this is the exact same example. But we're going to solve this using the confidence interval approach. Previously, in chapter 3.2, we solved this using the traditional approach with all the five steps. But now, in this video, we're going to solve this same question using the confidence interval approach. Okay, so these are the informations obtained from the question. They provide you with the mean and standard deviation of the sample. Okay, 31 water samples. So the sample size is 31. Uh, this is X bar, this is S, and this is the claim. Does this sample provide sufficient evidence that the mean pH level in the water differs from 8.5? So obviously, this is our claim here. Mean pH level differs from 8.5. So I think you all would already guess that this involves the expression of not equal. Alright, so let's go to the first step. We need to construct our uh, hypothesis statement. So this is our claim here, uh, saying that the average pH level is different from 8.5. And then automatically you can construct your H now from here, uh, mu equal to 8.5. So I'm pretty sure that you're familiar with this first step. But the second step in confidence interval approach is to construct the confidence interval yes so which confidence interval do you need to find in order to solve this hypothesis testing so that highly depends on your step number one if your step number one involves one population mean so the confidence interval you need to find here is the confidence interval for one population mean uh, let's say your step number one involves a uh, two population proportion so the confidence interval that you need to find in step two is the confidence interval for two population proportions. Okay, so let's try, let's go and find the confidence interval for our example 3.2 here. I'm going to show you the uh, formula table. Okay, so in this formula book, right, these are all the formula for test statistics value, while the left hand side here are all the formula that you can use to solve hypothesis testing using confidence interval approach. So please do not confuse between these two. Okay, so let's continue to solve our example 3.2. Uh, it involves one population mean. So I'm going to choose uh, one of these three formulas here. And our uh, example just now, it is uh, the case of sigma square unknown and sample size more than 30. So this is the right formula for me to use. Okay, so I'm going to continue and find the confidence interval and this is the answer that I get. Alright, so just substitute all the value accordingly and you will get the confidence interval here. So next, we're going to make a decision based on our hypothesized parameter. Okay, so let's recall what are the rules to make a decision in confidence interval approach. These two rules, okay? It highly depends on your hypothesized parameter. So what is your hypothesized parameter here? The hypothesized parameter in this case here is our mu naught. 
okay and i'm very sure that you know what is the value here it is 8.5 okay it's the value that uh, involves in your hypothesis statement so now you need to look at this value here and you need to compare with the confidence interval is 8.5 within these two values so how do you come to think of this all right so let's draw a number line all right so this is my a my lower limit of the confidence interval and this is my upper limit of the confidence interval this would be somewhere around 8.3 and this is 8.4 so the question now is is 8.5 within a and b if yes so you will need to do not reject h now if the mu naught is not within a and b your decision would be to reject h now so what would be your decision here you're right we need to reject h now because mu naught is not included in the interval right so that is how to make decision using confidence interval approach and finally just uh, make your conclusion it is exactly the same way how you did for the traditional approach so uh, in this example here, our conclusion is to uh, it, that we have enough evidence to support the claim that the mean pH level in the water differs from 8.5. So let's compare our answer using confidence interval approach here with uh, the one we did previously using the traditional approach. Okay. So in the confidence interval approach, in step 3, we decide to reject H now. And in traditional approach previously, we also decide to reject H now. So it's the same decision. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you want to use a, a confidence interval approach or you want to use a traditional approach. You should come across the same decision and also same conclusion. Okay, class. So that's it for my video today. Um, you can proceed to try on some of the exercises in our module. And please um, contact your lecturers if you have any questions. And watch my next video for the uh, hypothesis testing using p-value approach. Okay, bye!